This is the GV Podcast, a variety review podcast featuring two of the three idiots giving their thoughts on cartoons and anime. This is an opinion-based podcast, and there's no way we're saying our thoughts and opinions are objective. Keep this in mind and enjoy the show. Disclaimer. We wanted to take this in between to give everybody a heads up about the contents of this film. While our first goal is to entertain you, what must come first is an audience that is prepared for the topics discussed. Topics that include depression and what it could lead to. Thank you for your time, and let's get back to the video. What are we doing today? Oh, shin me. DMCA. DMCA again. again. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, everybody. Facing lawsuits with my friends on the road again. (laughs) Yes. This is Duke, Jinsu, and Mayhem back with the GV podcast. For today, we have a very special one. Because on the list of anime that I have, I rolled randomly, uh-huh. and out of all rolls, I rolled a movie. You rolled a movie. <laughs> Which means we're going to be back quick. You've been rolling for our, the shows we watch? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, but one day I will roll something that you will hate. Don't worry. It'll happen soon. Well, that's okay. In that case, we can vote majority. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a democracy. <laughs> I, d- I cast my own vote. I'm out of here! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so for today's movie, what is it, it is a 2016 movie by the name of A Silent Voice. That came out in 2016? Yes. Oh, shit. I thought that was older. Silent nope. Voice. Wow. Then again, 2016 was six years ago by the time we're recording this. So. Hey, Mayhem, what do you not have? A Silent Voice? Anyway, this was animated by uh, Kyoto <laughs> Animation. The film follows a former bully turned social outcast who decides to reconnect and befriend the deaf girl he had victimized years prior. What? That's the plot. Yes. Oh my god, okay. I'm not gonna go crazy with some kind of description with this because I want your pure thoughts from watching this and understand you will probably cry. What, you, you're not gonna tell me everything that happens in it and then when it does happen, I'm still confused? I'll be honest, I, mean, if I don't think I've watched this... <laughs> I, I haven't watched Ooh. it. Either. This will be my first time watching it. All right. It'll be a first time for all of us, but we've all heard good things. Well, the people that actually live life have heard things. Well, the people who don't live life have heard things. I'm very confused. I don't know which category I'm in. Jinsu, me and you. <laughs> we're, we, a... we're weebs. We don't live life. <laughs> but I we're have a we're job. immediate outcasts. No. I have, I have a No. I have a. But Jinzu, no, the thing is, even though you have a job, understand the anime still calls you. It still calls upon you. It still calls your name in the midnight. Tell me, I only, how, I only what is the days. most expensive figurine you've ever bought? I bought a $120 cloud figurine. See, that's the thing, is that you have one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't even have it on display. It's like, it's just he's just holding his buzzer sword, like the upper for Smash 4, in the box. Like, that's all he's doing. Oh, okay. Uh, you can see above where we're recording. You can't see, actually. Uh, well, I speak to you two. Uh, I'll, I might actually take a picture even of uh, to go along the shrine. Uh, <laughs> it is something like 30, 30, 30, 60, uh, 45, 45, uh, 60, 30, 30. And which of these characters is in this movie that we're watching? None. <laughs> I mean, there's a Mario Odyssey doll up there. Mario's in the movie. Mario! Yes! I best want, character! I want we're that watching the, the Mario fucking... Brothers. Oh, God, Chris Pratt! <laughs> take me home! It's enough to make a grown man cry. And that's okay. You go right ahead, (laughs) kid. That was pretty good. (laughs) Yes, it was. It was really good. Oh my god. That was really good. That was a really good movie. What what was it? A silent voice. what was that meme? That's a good joke. <laughs> it's a great joke, in fact. <laughs> oh, that was really good, dude. But, but in all seriousness, there was a few times where I was just... I was close, man. I was close to actually crying there in that movie. The chubby friend almost made me cry. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Let's <it's>, give... <laughs> what'd you yeah. think, Jutsu? <laughs> uh-huh. Let's uh-huh. give our non-spoiler thoughts. Okay. I think... Jinzu, what did you think? Uh, it was very, very well written. Um, movie is beautiful, but I think everyone who's watching this already knows that. Uh, imagine no one's seen it. <laughs> imagine no one's seen it. Okay, pretty as fuck. Very pretty movie. Uh, you, you're gonna have a new outlook on life. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's a really good statement right there. Just 
if I had to watch it again, I would be I would know what was happening and then therefore would think about it again and would start crying again. <laughs> yeah, I think a rewatch would <laughs> devastate me. The which yeah, best way to sum up my thoughts of that was so good and every second of it, I was just sitting there like Please don't hurt them. Don't please don't, don't hurt them. Like you can hurt them a little. Please don't hurt them so much. <laughs> and they hurt them so much. They hurt them so much. So when, so, when do we talk about spoilers? I will talk now. About, yeah, we'll talk about it now. now. Okay, we. So if you really don't want to get spoiled in this, watch um, it. God, oh, watch yeah, go it. watch but it. Please watch it. Like please don't like think that like please don't think that you have to hear somebody's opinion about it first in order to watch it. Just watch it. <laughs> anyway, the plot. Okay. So to run through the plot, we have, uh, we start in sixth grade, right? Yeah. Like, it is uh, year six for these kids of this small group of friends, uh, just normal little uh, elementary kids. Yeah, so yeah. I think what it was is that, like, it says year six, but I think it considers, like, kindergarten to be also, like, first year. In, in all fairness, I did know, uh, like, my big brother was in, uh, when he was in sixth grade, he was on the other side of the fence from the kindergartners that was us, because uh, we're around six years apart. And he was with all the elementary school kids. So yeah. at my old school, it was like yeah, one through some, six. Some schools in America are like that. Yeah, right? and but I'm think, pretty sure in Japan it would be like that, where it's like uh -huh. but six I think, years. I think, I think the distinction here is that um, Japanese school is considered kindergarten as year one instead of just kindergarten to first, second, third. So he would technically, in, if he was in our school system, he would more likely be in fifth grade. Yeah, fifth. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and they, so they like, started later on in the movie, they're in uh, senior year, essentially. So Yeah, they turn 18. God, that's a difference of seven years. Yep. Oh, wow. He's yeah. Been, he's been soaking that in for seven years. Wow. So, basically what happens is he's has, it's this kid named... Ishida, uh, I forgot. Just <laughs> as long as the uh, first name. Yeah, Ish Ishida was his, the name that everybody called him. Just this normal kid with a normal group of friends and everything. He's kind of a dick. Uh, well, at that point, he's just a normal kid. Just nothing kids are dicks. wrong. <laughs> Uh, like, at most, he's a bit of an asshole to his uh, fatter friend uh, of, like, chokeholds and stuff like that. It was an early sign of showing that they're the kind of people to be like, different person, get him! What happens is, one day at his school, this uh, deaf girl ends up joining his class. Uh, and obviously... Name? Her name's uh, Nishi, or Nishimiya. Nishimiya. Uh, she ends up joining the class, and has a bit of a rough start of like okay people are starting to warm up but you, you can tell it's starting to boil of like there are some kids in that class that are really getting ready to pick on her they don't even believe that she's actually deaf and i'm just like what <laughs> like like obviously like kids like oh you can't hear but i can hear why can't you hear ishido and all the other friends uh, in his friend group end up bullying this girl and uh, any girl that interacts with her. Because different! Get him! Yeah. While Ishido is the main one to bully her the most, that doesn't mean that everyone else is just on the sidelines just doing nothing. No, they're all terrible people. Of like, <laughs> uh, yeah, this will be funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's rip this thing out of her ear. Like They're ripping her uh, uh, they keep on hearing aids the hearing out of her aids. Uh, ear. Eight of them in the course of five months. And the very last one yeah. is... The very last one is the one that he rips out so hard, it causes her to her, bleed. Nicks her ear. It leaves uh, a scar. Which, it's... It, it, was it suggested that it led to permanent damage in the future? No, it never... They never Expl said that. It they never just, wasn't explicit. Yeah. They never specify on it, but... Um, she does lose more of her hearing throughout, this, yeah. throughout the movie. But uh, it is mentioned uh, very vividly that she has a scar from that. Yeah, it, it Not was... Not vividly. Like, it, well, wait, wait. It was acknowledged. It, it, it was, was acknowledged, acknowledged yeah. yeah. But basically what happens is after a while, because of the fact that she's lost so many of these hearing aids, she ends up leaving the school to uh, do this. But before then, they mention, like the family mentions, hey, we've lost eight hearing aids. Those are expensive. Uh, we know one of you kids has been uh, taking them and uh, messing with them. And every one of the kids and the teacher throws Ishido under the bus. Yeah, because he was the most... Like ex like obvious one to be bullying her, but everybody else was also just not to his degree. So obviously, 
like when he was the one that was called out, everybody dogpiled onto. Yeah, it was him. It was him. It was him to save their own asses. Yeah, to save themselves. I will probably mention later, but there is definitely one person from this group that. Uh, well, there's two people I really hate from this uh, group <laughs> that threw under the bus. I'll be a hundred percent. Like one of them's super obvious of why I hate her. The other one is just ooh, she gets under my skin. I'll get to it. Don't worry. So, but what ends up happening is he gets kicked out of his friend group because he was thrown on the bus and everything and ends up gets bullied by those friends that he was with, uh, the blonde kid and uh, the fat kid. Gets bullied by them, gets just ousted by all his different friend groups, like everybody. He becomes just... a forced, he's forced into being a loner. Yeah. And what ends up happening is when he's a teenager, it, First off, he tries learning some sign language as basically atonement of, like, he wants to find a way for of forgiveness for what he did to her. And on the way, he gets a job, raises some money, uh, gets the your... money to his mom because his mom actually went to the family of the deaf girl and paid them, uh, like... Uh, like uh, a really, like, a large... It, does, it doesn't say explicitly how much that he's that they had to pay, Though there was, like, a, he was paying her back at one point, and, like, the amount of money that he was giving her was $1.7 million. Yeah, it was zen. at least $1.7 million, yeah. is, yeah. it's suggested. Yeah. yeah, so that's, like... Yeah. About 100000 Yeah. Yeah. But so, but it's or, not explicit like 10, that 000? that's... 10000 It's $10,000. Around there. Yeah. Around $10,000 is... Uh, Given to the uh, to the family of the deaf girl. It's not explicitly as said an apology. That's the same amount. We'll say it is. Yeah. Well, we, we can we can concur that it is because uh, he the, repays her. Yeah, yeah. he, he so. repays her, so he he gets all the money that he needs to pay back, and he gives it to her. Oh, okay. Um, and it's it's uh, told right before that she pays the family that she she's just a hairstylist, so she, they're the family's really poor. So not only are they poor, now they're even more poor because he was being a little shit. Yep. So now he has that guilt on him. Yeah. And after repaying her, after, what, six to seven years, uh, what ends up happening is once he's done repaying her, he decides that that is the point when he's going to try to take his own life. With a crazy visual at the beginning with him um, having the uh, a um, calendar that he's ripped off everything leading up to the day that he's going to do it. And he planned it out. He planned it completely out. That like when he exactly quits his job, when he sells some of his like all of his stuff, like he sells everything he has. The story writes severe depression very well. Yeah, it, it gets it hits very like it it's very heavy, but in the good way. Like it's just like what well, not in a they good, recognize good way. It. They yeah, recognize it fully, and they like, yeah. they they treat it as seriously as it as should seriously be. as it should be. Yes, there we go. It moves on. He doesn't take his life, but at the same time, he heads home um, after meeting up with the, uh, with the girl who was deaf. Uh, well, not meeting up with her, more of like just trying. Or, or like, oh, the he... I'll say show. I yeah. remember that was the big name. That was but, her nickname. Yeah, her yeah. nickname. Uh, he meets up with show, and he tries to apologize and everything of like, hey, can we be friends? And she ends up saying yes, but he heads home, and when he heads home, his mom says, hey, I saw the check. Thank you. But also... You're not taking your life. Yeah, she... I'm going to make sure of that. You're not taking your life. I will burn this check before you take your life. Obviously, his mother, wondering why he's selling all of his belongings and everything like that, goes into his room and finds the calendar with a certain day as the end of the calendar. Obviously, a mother's going to know when her kid is going to do something that is like affecting them. Which, by the way, she does actually burn the money, but that's just Anyways. because she... <laughs> that was because that was because the mother was a d d absolute. She's too doting. She's too doting of a mother. And she well, she... in all fairness, she also did say like, oh, either way, I would want to burn that because oh, what do I want money from my uh, like do I want suicide son uh, money from my son? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, like the mother, obviously, just she is of that caliber of money isn't the importance having. My son with me is more important. What ends up what ends up happening is afterwards he starts becoming more friends with he starts becoming more friends with uh, the deaf girl the show and while he's befriending her in the background uh, he's starting to gain more friends at school because there's this kid with the, 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 the way that Duke like pointed him out just in the background he was just like because like there's this whole thing where like he sees people with X's so you only really see their hair and then Duke just so just so happens to see somebody's specific hair and then he goes 
oh look, it's green hair Mineta. And I go, <laughs> why did you say that? And then, <laughs> and then in the next scene, he's now in the story, and I go, you did this. <laughs> it was, it was so fun. No, honestly, how was I not supposed to point it out? Considering like it, on the bike, it, uh, on the bike ride to school, you see him oh, 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 right next to him, and then when he's at school, you see behind him. Same dude, green hair Mineta. Yeah. And then once he's eating, green hair Mineta. Yeah. I, actually, I actually did not notice Nagatsuka. Oh, is that his name? I forgot. I think but, so. It's close enough. Yeah, I don't remember. But yeah, I, I actually didn't <laughs> green notice Green hair him. Mineta. Yeah, I didn't notice him. And then... Greenetta. And then... And then <laughs> And then Duke just brought him up out of nowhere, and I was like, what's he talking about? <laughs> there he is! <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy, basically what happens is, he's a, a one of the school days, he's about to have his bike stolen by somebody. Like, uh, this guy comes up to him and tries stealing his bike. And the, uh, the main character comes over and says, like, he's thinking of saying something, and he goes, hey, you can borrow my bike. And he goes, oh, wow, you're a real angel. And takes his bike and leaves. And steals it. Yeah, he steals and it. And never comes back. Yeah, he never comes back. But at the same time, Green Hair Mineta... Uh, Finds uh, it. Yeah, Granetta uh, ends <laughs> Granetta! up... Granetta! <laughs> oh uh, Granetta God. ends up going off and retrieving the bike and bringing it back to him of like, I managed to find it. It is so cool. Uh, here, I got it back for you. And like, they start becoming friends and the, the X that's on his face begins to peel off and it falls off and he sees his face. And they start becoming friends, and time passes. I'm guessing probably a, a week or two. Yeah, uh, some time where they're able to start building a proper friendship. Like, it's not like, oh, it's the same day. No, it's actually, like, you see them go and, like, hang out at the mall. They go watch, like, they go to the movies. Like, they actually just hang out and start to become good friends. Which, Grinetta is one of my favorite characters, even though I'm calling him by a, <laughs> the name that he's not. Because he's somebody that's just, like, like, obviously in a lot of these kind of movies and like with the tone of these kind of shows and movies, you kind of, it's almost necessary to have a character that has a more comedy relief. Yeah. A, a comic relief, not in a, Oh, I'm just stupid and I'm useless to the story and all that kind of stuff. Sort of character. No, he's actually somebody with that is involved, cares about the main, about the characters that's in the story with him. And obviously he's not in the same mindscape as them. So he's able, so he, like he does things a little bit differently from them. You see, that's the problem with some shows and movies that um, try to do drama. The problem is that you got to find this good balance between drama and comedy because if you keep beating down your audience, what's going to end up happening is they're just not going to care anymore. They're going to hit up, they're going to hit the floor, right. and they're not going to care anymore. You got to. They have won't that. care about the plot. They won't care about anything because it'll be like, eh. Who cares? It's it, just gonna go downhill from here, right? It's like a game of like the balloon. Don't let the balloon touch the floor. Where like if you're just like letting them be sad all the time, and you're just letting the balloon fall and then hit the ground, what's like what's the whole point of that? You need the comic relief character to kind of bring it up a little. Bit. It, actually, a better comparison, honestly, would be um, a person drowning and you throwing them the life vest. The the comic relief is their life vest. I went for a balloon. You went with murder. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Here's the thing. If you if you've got this person in the pool and you can tell that they're drowning and you're just like suck it up it's drama and they just drown they won't care they're you're, dead you're lost in the sauce <laughs> <laughs> they're lost in the sauce but if you give them the life vest then they'll be able to uh, swim they'll be able to swim through the plot and care about yeah it. if you don't they're dead and, and they're then, gone from the plot <laughs> and then the other and then like what some things try and do for a comic relief that doesn't match where instead of throwing a life preserver they throw the boat at the person where it's just like <laughs> here you go the, basically it's almost like the uh, comparison would be throwing a life vest versus throwing them like a boat and a ladder of like okay well now they're just out of the water and they've left yeah they, they, and we give them the and the keys to my car <laughs> yeah what ends up happening is and my social security number <laughs> these two become friends date my sister <laughs> speaking of sister <laughs> you never see her What's this? Uh, well, little sister. The little sister. We oh. end up meeting the little sister of a uh, uh, show who is this little photographer girl that uh, is super protective of her deaf sister. And she doesn't like the idea of the protagonist hanging out with show because of the fact that he was her uh, elementary school bully. Yeah. And obviously the sister is going to know when like when she's obviously when that they're that close together they're going to tell each other everything. Yeah. Uh 
eventually they warm up together and uh, the little sister who the protagonist brings into his household just to because he saw that she was depressed or something. But and didn't didn't know that she was related yet and was just like, you're in the middle, like, you're in this play structure in the middle of the rain. You're going to catch a cold. You're going to die. Here, let me take you I to my it, place so you can get a warm meal. I think it was the little sister trying to avoid school, was that? Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because she yeah, mentioned still, that she's been avoiding school. Yeah, like that was a thing, and the re- and like a lot of this was just it, it, ama- it's paired. The story that we're telling is paired with amazing visuals and once again, watch of, and really good music and just it. It has a lot of quiet moments, like not, and I don't think it's just because oh, one of the main characters is deaf. Let's try and go for a more quieter tone. No, it actually like is able to take a moment, let these emotions process, and not be hitting you constantly with loud music or something like that or unnecessary talking. Rather than go through the whole plot and describe everything beat by beat, I'm going to run through and I'm going to say, like, the group of friends that he ends up getting uh, of there is essentially a random guy, right? Of, like, just a random classmate or something like that? It was the red-haired dude, right? Who was just, like... He was just a classmate who wanted to be his friend. Uh, There is uh, the girl who... uh, The white-haired girl named Kawai who was... One of the friends that he had back in the day, that was kind of the... sorta, who was like friends with a friend kind of thing. Yeah, uh, one of the bullies, basically. There is she uh... was she was one of the bullies. Kawhi was one of the bullies, but she never like outwardly bullied. She just kind of like was one of those kids that never stood up for the person who was being bullied and just kind of sat there. Yeah, I'll talk about her later. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I have thoughts. <laughs> uh, and the third person was. Uh, the uh, basically it was the only person that tried to learn sign language back when they were oh, kids. Sahara. Sahara, uh, who was uh, trying to be friends with Sho. Uh, was there anyone else? Well, there, there was the uh, the black haired girl. Ooh, so anyway, there was no one else. <laughs> so there's this one bitch. There was no one else. Anyway, what ends up happening is <laughs> um, the worst character in the entire movie comes up and ruins everything. Worst as up, in she's. She's very defensive of herself and tries to make a better image for herself. Makes everything about herself. I'll get to her later. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, at the cost of show. Yeah, at the cost of show. Yeah. Basically, it keeps going downhill of people hurting show, people hurting the protagonist. Taking advantage and of And it them. gets so bad that near the end of the movie, this is the big one that uh, I'll, I have probably put a warning uh, between uh, parts just for people that are sensitive to this subject. Uh, show tries to take her own life. Uh, near the end of this movie, she tries to take her own life. And thank God Ishido was there to catch her. Ishido, no, 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 thank God Yuzuru, Sho's little sister, told him to go get her camera. Oh, yeah, that yeah, that too, yeah. That, Ishido, that Those events played out in a way so that he was able to catch her. Yeah. Ishido comes in and grabs her hand, manages to throw her up, but at the same time, it just trying to pull her up, threw him in, and fell, and uh, luckily hit water. I'll be honest. <laughs> like... He should have died. It. He should have died. Water he, he, is just as bad as concrete. Yeah, depend, depending on how high Depending on the height, which, yeah, if it was concrete, splattered dead. Yep. But because of the fact that it was water, he has at least a chance. Yeah. It, I it, think it, the way he fell into kind of helped as well. Sho ends up trying to bring together all his friends to try to welcome him back of, like, try to care for him and everything. And the moment he gets out of the hospital, Sho takes him and brings him back to school and brings him back to his friends who, yes, let's get my favorite moment. But, but wait, but right before they go back to the school, like, what that happens is that they both wake up at the same time and go to the bridge because that's just kind of, like, their yeah. place to, like, it, it's become their safe abode, the safe home, safe, safe space, <laughs> words, the safe space in front to... Of the, in front of the center that's, like, for the deaf club. Yeah, yeah, th- that they've started to, like, that's where their hangout spot kind of became. So obviously when they're not feeling good, they want to go there and to feel better. And they both do that after Ishido finally wakes up. And they have this really amazing moment together that I honestly, like, that's all I kind of want to say because of just how emotionally heavy it gets. <laughs> oh, I almost teared up there. But uh, the point where I, where I genuinely felt like I was about to tear up was when he meets up finally with the rest of his friends, the first friend to come and check on him when he gets to the school, as he's in the bathroom, is... Nagu... Nagatsuka. Nagatsuka. Nagatsuka, who comes in and is just crying of like, 
I would go through a, a million of those to make sure you stay with me, uh, you stay friends with me. And it's like, oh, wow, you had to hurt me. That yeah. is true friendship. That is true, true brotherly When, when I saw him crying, I was like, why are you hurting me, Granetta? <laughs> Granetta, <laughs> why, you, why, why are must you, you hurt me? You are. It's good Manetta. That's yeah. why he's green. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, that's what Granetta stands for. Got it. Good, good green Manetta. Yeah. <laughs> Just two and, G's. Uh, after, like, when the credits started rolling. Don't forget the end scene. Where he's walking out, he's uh, he's been accepted by his friends, and as he's walking out, he's established throughout this entire thing that he can't hear people, he can't see their faces, he can't register any of it because he. I think it's basically because he doesn't it, see himself on an equal uh, equal plat, uh, platform as them. He doesn't see the, himself as equals to them. And it's he's, represented he's by as these below that blue X's. That's basically just it's a way for him to mark that these people would not accept him. As he's beginning to accept himself uh, as an actual person uh, beginning to accept that he can live as he's walking down he begins to hear everybody like noise starts to come back to him and you watch as the x's slowly start to fall off people and then everyone and the then x's fall off it all hits all together and it's just Ooh! so and then at the end of the movie i just wanted to say if you're happy and you know it clap your hands oh <laughs> At the end of... <laughs> yeah. <At> the... <laughs> Good enough? <laughs> but... This is crying. Just I got... Okay. Now then, what I really want to mention are the characters. So, first off, we've got main character. I love the main character. He's such a sad protagonist. That, that actually, like, when he was in the elementary school, middle school, he was absolutely a little shit. But thankfully, that's kids. But that's kids, and he learns that what he did was wrong. Uh, yeah, he's just, it's such a sad story for him of just over and over. He keeps trying, but something comes in the way and messes it up every time. <laughs> something messes it up. But wait, there's more. Uh, the other character I gotta mention, Show. Show is adorable. I'm so sorry for her. <laughs> The deaf girl, she was so sweet and She kind. just wanted to be, have friends, and everybody enjoy being around her, even though she had some limitations. She just wanted people to accept her. Jensu, your thoughts on the main two characters? Very tragic, very well written. Yeah, no, they're both, they're both very wonderful characters. Very, uh, very wholesome. 10 out of 10. Yeah. I watched it, and all, all I could think was, he's just like me, for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like me, the red Eminem. The red angry so, the red angry bird. As for other characters, uh, big ones to mention. Uh, I'll real quick mention there were the two friends from when he was a kid. Of I had troubles with him at first. Of like, oh, he's an asshole, and then he comes back, and it's like, oh, he's doesn't seem like an asshole anymore, but it's still like he's there, I guess. And then he's he's the one to save that he that he was the one that that when Ishido fell into the river from preventing Sho from committing suicide, she, uh, he was the one that was able to, I don't, I don't know if they, I don't, I don't remember if they he said did. if he, he saved him. If he pulled, like pulled him from, he was the one that pulled him from the river? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he was the one that pulled him from the river. It was the kind of thing of like, listen, I'm not going to be this guy who's going around being friends with you of like, uh, we'll be best friends forever. But at the same time, I don't hate you. Uh, uh, uh other characters mention, uh, let's mention Granetta real quick. <laughs> You really don't want to talk about Ueno, do you? <laughs> huh? You really don't want to talk about that girl, do you? Oh no, I'll talk about her. Don't worry. Uh, I'm leaving. I'm leaving my two least favorite characters for the end of this because I got plenty of rant for that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but Granetta was awesome. I loved him. He was a good comic relief, and he was just a good, fun character who was nice and just good-hearted. He's just the best. My favorite character was Ishida's uh, brother-in-law. Yeah! <laughs> he shows up at the beginning and at the end and no so, in all he does is so, grin and give you a thumbs up. Yes. So Ish Ishido's family is uh there is his mom who apparently was a uh, I guess uh, a uh delinquent back in the day cuz she has blonde hair and you can see her roots coming out. But other than that, then there's the his sister, which who, we assume is an older sister because he's in high school yes, and Yes. Of course it is, yeah. But yeah. it's, it's it's yeah, dude. It's just, it's just things are just things aren't explicit. <laughs> well, yeah, but we see the older sister, and she has her own family of this little girl and her husband, who is this big giant black dude, and it's <laughs> awesome. And he just comes in, and he's just like, "Hey, everybody!" 
You know, the best part about that is probably, he's probably, like, if he lived here in the States, he'd probably be at a normal height. Yeah! But, <laughs> but since he's in, Japan, <laughs> he's in Japan, he's giant. He's, like, six feet tall, uh, six feet tall at most, and it's like, well, in Japan, that's pretty damn tall. Yeah, that's in, Japan, Japan. in Japan, five foot eight is pretty fucking damn tall. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you, you now have given me a chance to mention uh, her daughter... Oh yeah, is the Maria. Cutest, yeah, Maria, Baby. the cutest little sweetie pie. It's just she's so precious. Baby. Yeah, she's baby. Where she runs up after um her uncle uh the, Ishido, after Ishido, after Ishido, fell, after off Ishido fell off, she thought he died, so she just runs up. Dead, dead. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. She just says that you're dead. Yeah, dead. He's just, just no. He came back from the came back to life. You don't have to worry. And yeah, kids, they they are like that. Of like, they don't know how to really phrase that kind of stuff. They're just like, you're dead. <laughs> She's not going to be like, oh Ishido, I'm so glad that you are not <laughs> dead from almost committing suicide. That's a joke, and that was a joke in one anime where it was like. What a precious baby. Your name is going to be... My name is this. He just spoke! <laughs> My name is Hernando. Hernando? <laughs> and I fear nothing. It's not a name. <laughs> and I fear nothing. And I fear nothing. But other than that, there is uh, the red-haired dude who... Not much to mention there, but at the same time, he's a bro. He's a good bro. He's just somebody that's just like, Ooh. hey, I want to be... Remember, exactly. The, the red-haired dude. Remember, there was that other oh, friend right, right, right. that Kawhi kind chill. of wanted to like, go Like, there was with. even, like, uh, there was a scene where he was insulting each one of his friends to try to get him away from him because he felt like he didn't deserve him. And the red-haired dude was just like, why are you even bothering you? Uh, you don't matter in this. <laughs> like, yeah. That was the insult of... You're not even existent. <laughs> no, it's, you have it's no like, part of it. Who are, you, who are you? You weren't like you weren't involved in this, so don't try and get involved in it. Basically, and he's just like, man, that's cold, bro. And he leaves. <laughs> yeah, basically, he was just such a bro. Yeah, he just he just kind of took, he took it as fuck. I thought we were homies. Weirdly enough, I had a lot of friends like that where it was like uh, not super close, but it was like like it, it seemed like yeah, we're friends. We don't have to say it. We're friends. Yeah. Now I'm living in your house. But we don't talk. <laughs> Now I'm, now I'm doing YouTube with you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've insulted both of you. Good. But yeah, he was just there. He was a good character. Now then. <laughs> now we're getting to the other side. I hate to say this, but the only other two girls. <laughs> Kawaii? Oh, wait. No, I, I'm so sorry. I almost forgot a, an actually good character. Uh, Sahara. I almost forgot yeah. about her. Oh, no, we, yeah, we so talked about her. We talked about we talked her. Yeah, we talked a bit about her. She was just, she was really nice. And like, I felt bad yeah, for she, her of like, oh, I'm such a coward. I can't help you. And it's like, no, you're fine. That she <laughs> felt like she ran away when she probably didn't even have a choice to be moved from schools. Yeah, and got called a coward for it. Yeah. Yeah. But ah, projecting. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was just a nice character. But now then, for my rant. <laughs> uh, what is her name? Black hair girl. Ueno? Ueno. Ueno. I hate her. It's a, it's definitely, I, I will say that in a story like this, it was good to have a character that we don't necessarily see the direct opposite change that they go through. That at the, at only at the very end were we able to see at least a glimpse, a glimpse of what she is going to of be. Of her good side. Of, yeah, going to become a better person. But! <laughs> I'll be 100%. <laughs> yeah, they try to say, oh, there's good in her. At the same time... There's that whole moment. She's in year six. What does she do? She's a bitch to this to this girl, <laughs> to this deaf girl. Oh, what happens seven years later when she's now a full grown adult? She decides, ooh, this gives me a chance to bully her more. And it's like you're you're seven years older. <laughs> you're eighteen. You're able to vote in the United States. I don't know if you're able to vote in Japan. I don't even know if you can. If there are votes, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but. I don't know when in Japan they consider you adult, but I'm just thinking they do. Uh, what kind of hope they can vote. Ah, <laughs> uh, King Japan, yes. King Japan! It's probably all online anyway. Yeah. Isn't that just uh, Akira Toriyama? The King of Japan? No. No, that's oh. Godzilla. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> no, that's Kamen Rider. No, it's King Kong. That's a Warner Brothers property! <laughs> From the US! But, <laughs> what... What are we talking about again? When it came... <laughs> Black hair girl. I hate her. She's just so damn mean. Every interaction with her is just her like, oh, by the way, I still hate you. And yeah, it looks like every interaction with her, it 
feels like she tries to do everything she can to be as insufferable as possible. She's physically abusive to a uh, to a deaf uh, girl to show. She's physically abusive to her. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. Are we supposed to say like, oh, she's got some good in her? No, she's an abusive ass to to show. She she's an abusive ass to show, but she is good to the main character. She does she does care about him and does go out of her way and uh, like she was the one that never like even though she didn't let show into the room. Obviously. Exactly. That's my other problem. When it was like, oh, that's the girl that co- uh, cared for you. Yeah. By shoving Show out of the room to make sure, uh, like, uh, she could get them all to herself. That's what happened. Like, every time Show came to the room, I'm like, here, can you give this to him? See what I got for you, Ishida. Well, that's because, that's because in, her, in her warped mentality and, and perspective of it, she, she views... Uh, Show is the reason why he was there. Yeah, so she, she's blaming him. She, she does genuinely care about Ishida, but she's misdirecting some it's more random... Of an obs- it, honestly, it feels more of an obsession. I ain't gonna like her, ever. That's fine. She's a bitch. <laughs> now, to mention my other least favorite character, for uh, very specific reasons, uh, Kawai. Yeah. The, the one that, she she wasn't as much of a physical bully or like verbally abusive bully or anything like that. She was more of one of those characters that she would always kind of be on the sidelines. But when you're on the sidelines, when someone's getting bullied, that means that you're also part of the problem. And so, basically, and, and also being with the group of friends, not trying to get them to stop and just trying to still be with them and be friends with them and all that kind of stuff. You're not she's not trying to improve or anything. Okay. So, she's trying she's trying to be like, I I was not doing anything the entire time, even though. Yeah, there were some don't moments. worry, I'll handle that one. <laughs> but so also the best she, way that I she can describe doesn't her, shut up either. She can't. She's shut a gossip. The fuck up. So gossip. the best way that I can describe her when it comes to her role uh, well, like early on in the story was uh, you guys remember Fairly Odd Parents? Uh, Trixie Tang. Oh, remember my the blonde God. friend. Nope. Oh wait, Trixie. Okay, yeah. Yeah, love interest. Wait, that's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, remember the blonde friend? Yeah, there's Kawhi. That's awesome. Of that's, like, that oh yeah, horrible. I'm just as mean. I'm just as mean as uh, Trixie Tang, but I'm not as bad as her. But I'm not her, even though we do the exact same. Wait, shit. they're both literally blondes. No, no, no. Like, 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 like yeah. the no, like the the, <laughs> the duality, the dynamic between the two. Or the four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Which now, I get to go to uh, why I hate her so much. Uh, oh, <laughs> let's describe what she does every so often. Of like, oh wait, you were bullying her too. Why would you say that? I didn't bully her at all. <laughs> <laughs> you were the one that did it and nobody else. Yeah. Oh, here, let's jump forward seven years. Don't you? Uh, uh, hey, have you been mentioning uh, what I did back in the day to uh, anybody? Why would you say that? Hey, everybody! He was a bully back in year six. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and that is here. Let's describe another interaction. No. <laughs> uh, uh, you do know that you were a bully to her too. Why would you repeat? <laughs> that was every interaction with her. Yes. Of like, if somebody called her out for her bullshit, she'd start crying. Yeah. That's a manipu- that's a classic, manipulative tactic. Classic classic kid shit to do. Yeah, but she's eighteen. Classic, Somebody who didn't grow up. Classic kid shit to do. Seriously, that's what pissed me off the most. Like, it's obvious manipulative bullshit. It, I've seen that with people of like, oh, you call them out on their bullshit. Oh, what are they gonna do? Start crying. So that it seems like you're the bad guy. And that's what she does. She screams in front of the class of, Oh, this guy did this bad, this bad, and this bad back when we were kids. Yeah, and it, it it feels kind of weird that like you get why these characters are the way like are tor- are this way because they didn't change, they didn't develop in these seven years of a time gap between when they were first bowling show to now in this presence in the story. They didn't evolve and change and see what they did was wrong, and it kind of goes in backwards succession that the more you like them, the more that they've changed, the more that they've learned. And obviously, these two girls, they kind of... Like, Kawaii kind of learned a b- bit... They, like, didn't, they didn't see anything wrong with their previous actions, so they didn't bother to change. Yeah. As opposed to Ichido, who goes through a whole metamorphosis. <laughs> yeah, he like, that entire part in the beginning where he's going to go and kill himself, it's, like, going through a very huge hardship, and then when he finally decides not to do it, when he wakes up, you can see that he's, like shivering in the corner of his room like or not the corner but like next to the window and it's almost like it was he went through this very harmful change 
that took that changed his entire worldview basic where it's like now he's starting to see things differently and only at the end does he fully complete that change when all the exes fall off which is very beautiful it's so good <laughs> it's so there were so many moments where like I almost wanted to pause this, the movie and take a picture of the screen. There are so yeah. many. Oh times. man, you could pause the movie at any moment and it would be it could it was it was wallpaper worthy. So here's the thing what I'm going to start doing now is that I'm going to start taking screenshots of every second of a movie <laughs> and put them up as frames in my house. So all you have to do is go at a walking at a certain speed and then you see the entire movie. There are Twitter <laughs> accounts for that. <laughs> oh yeah. There's there's an actual Twitter that has been going on for I uh, probably a while now of just taking a screenshot for, of every frame from SpongeBob. a SpongeBob movie. Hell yeah, I love that. Account. That's amazing. Well, I need to see then this. Then there's never Shrek. Seen I've never well, seen then this. Then there before. was Shrek. Oh, there's Shrek too. Where I think last time I checked, they were on Shrek three. Oh my god! Wow. Somebody's yeah. got time. Someone's been working. Yeah. Well, I'm sad for them because they have to watch Shrek three. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> it's Shrek the Third, but anyway, is that the bad so one or it was the one with uh uh God? Uh, oh, King I remember Arthur, King Arthur. King Arthur. Yeah. And, and if you were gonna try and say Shrek two, I was gonna, I was gonna have to kill you because that is one of the greatest movies ever made. I want to get to my thing of when it comes down to it, all the characters, every one of them was great in some way. Once again, the only two characters where I looked and I was like, by the end, I don't like where it ended off with them. Was Black hair girl and Kawhi. But that's the thing. Sometimes with these kind of movies and stuff like that, they kind of have to leave it in a place it's that you can It's no. balance, man. Here's the thing. When I say where they left off, usually that would be like, oh, they left off bad and like that For was a sequel it. or something. No, like no. When I say where they left off, I mean of, oh, they have good in them. Like with There's the black hair girl. I, I see like, the oh, potential. There's a lot of good in her. And it's like, but honestly, give it ten years, she'll probably just be back to this bullshit, and she'll have a, she'll probably have a boyfriend that she's abusing. Kawhi is the one where I'm like, she never, uh, like never in my mind was she a good character. She pops up like, oh hi, I'm really cheerful, and it's like, okay, okay, you don't, you seem fine. Then uh, why would you call me out on my bullshit? And it's like, screw it. I think it's good to like characterization, like the character is an actual human being character, but yeah, no, she's With a terrible flaws person. Flaws and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand flaws. At the Some same time, I ain't gonna accept flaws. <laughs> it's basically, if I had a friend like this, I'd drop him immediately. If I had a friend like this, I wouldn't have a friend like this. Fine, that. I'll leave! <laughs> <laughs> when I say, right, by you. the way, when I say drop him immediately, I don't mean just like, oh, I don't speak to him anymore. I mean fully just <laughs> suplex him. <laughs> German suplex. Of like, oh, are you coming in for a hug? Why are you going behind me? <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> but anyway... Now, let's finish off with best character of the movie was obviously Grenetta. No, best character of the movie was Show. Best character of the movie was Grenetta. Show! Grenetta! The best character in the movie was his sister's giant husband. <laughs> okay, we character. can all agree on that. We can there all agree there. there. Giga there Chad, go. random black brother. <laughs> Giga <above>. Chad. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> Final thoughts on the movie, Jinzu? Uh, this movie is a very good. Uh, like representation of what uh, depression can do to someone and how far it can take someone. And it's also a very good lesson for how valuable life is. So live, please. You are, you are very loved. Don't, don't kill yourself. Thoughts, Mayhem? <laughs> yeah, this, um, this movie kind of, um, kind of spoke to me in sort of, in a speci very specific way that I won't go into full specifics. It kind of, it, it, it very much, allow it, it's like you know when you always have like a trouble for words and stuff like that and somebody just brings something up that fits what you're thinking perfectly yeah that was this movie where i was just able to see it from basically from someone else's perspective and being able to look in on it and be able to explain it and also it looked beautiful sound beautiful all that kind of stuff it was great yeah my final thoughts good lord this movie was beautiful had some great messages portrayed the uh, mental illness uh physical disabilities and all that in such an amazing way and god i loved every second of it it was so good well, there are two seconds that you at least didn't like <laughs> <laughs> there were many seconds there were many her name seconds. was Kawhi. <laughs> but and bueno. 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 and black hair girl <laughs> well what we can end off now uh, with is a teaser for people to get excited for next time. Uh -huh. Okay? 
So what I want you guys to do is we're going to roll right before we leave. We're going to roll to see what show or movie you guys watch next. Oh, okay. would you look at the time? Would I got to go. Nope, you're sitting down. All right. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> you got dangerously close. I saw it. Okay, so you guys got dangerously close. If it was three and one, it would have been Sword Art Online. <laughs> <sighs> I'm seeing Jinsu's face, and it's just a look of, I was ready to kill you. <laughs> it was ready but to... <laughs> because you rolled three and two, you guys get to watch Bofuri. Which, let me read the full title for this for you guys, okay? Bofuri's Nuts? <laughs> I'm going to kill both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Please do it. <laughs> both of you. Okay. Oh, no. It's one of those uh, based on like a light novel, okay? Okay. It is called Both of you. I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. Okay. Wait, me... I will tell you from experience because I've seen the first few episodes. It is the cutest shit ever. And we'll get to it next time. Woo! There won't be a part one to it. It'll just be flat out our thoughts because I'm so excited to get to watch more of it. It's so good. I cannot wait to meet, and once again, main character's name is Maple. Her name is Maple. You'll see all kinds of cute shit with that. Okay. Now I'm going to go look at fireworks from the balcony, guys. Wait, no! Wait, no! <laughs> I need you for editing! Yeah! <laughs> If you want to see more of our content, you can find our YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter on our link tree at linktree slash greenvillains. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash greenvillains.